Hey guys, what's up? My name is Serge and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at 5 steps you can take in post production to make your voiceover sound better. Most of the stuff can be done directly in Final Cut Pro, but I personally prefer to use Audacity for recording and editing voiceovers. Audacity is an open source, cross platform audio software for multi track recording and editing. This software can be downloaded for free from Audacity's website, which I'll link in the description. Like I mentioned before, this video will focus on post production steps after your voiceover has been recorded. But to get the best results, you should still make every possible effort to get a good recording in the first place. This includes a good quality microphone, recording in a suitable and quiet environment, and making sure to speak loud and clear. Once your audio file has been recorded, let's take a look at the 5 steps to improve it. Step 1. Noise Reduction Noise reduction can be used to remove a constant background noise from your recording, such as the hum noise of an air conditioner or the hiss of a cooling fan on your computer that cannot be eliminated beforehand. It is not suitable for removing individual clicks and pops or irregular background noises such as traffic or a live audience. To apply noise reduction to your clip, you first have to get a noise profile. This teaches Audacity about the noise you want to remove. Click and drag out a part of your clip where the waveform is as close to a flat line as you can get. Your selection needs to be at least 0.05 seconds long, but a longer profile is better. Next, from the menu bar select Effect and Noise Reduction. In the Noise Reduction pop-up window, click the Get Noise Profile button to complete this step. Next, press Command A to select your entire waveform and once again choose Effect and Noise Reduction. From my experience, the default settings do a great job here, so leave them at 12, 6 and 3 and press OK to apply noise reduction to your waveform. Step 2. Compressor The compressor effect compresses the louder parts of your recording, allowing the entire clip to be amplified. The result will allow you to amplify the quieter parts of your clip without clipping the louder passages. To apply the compressor effect to your clip, in the menu bar select Effect and Compressor. In the Compressor Effect pop-up window, there's a few adjustments that need to be made. First one is the Compressor Threshold. This is the volume level above which your audio will get compressed. For voiceovers, I'd recommend about minus 12 to minus 14 decibels. Next setting is your Noise Floor. Set this to around negative 40 decibels to make sure none of your quieter background noises get unnecessarily amplified. The third slider is for your compression ratio. This is the ratio at which your louder parts get compressed. A 2 to 1 ratio will suffice most of the time, but if your recording has lots of very loud and very quiet parts, you can go up to 5 to 1 ratio. Attack and release time sliders determine how fast the compressor kicks in and out for your sounds above the set threshold. If your volume increase is gradual, set these to a higher number. If the changes are more sudden, then a lower number will work better, but may be a little more noticeable to your listener. I'd recommend leaving the bottom two options unchecked. Press OK to apply the compressor effect to your clip. Step 3. Limiter Filter Whereas the compressor effect is used to turn down the louder parts, the limiter filter turns up the quieter parts of your clip. To be more exact, it amplifies the softer passages more than the louder ones. Both these effects are used to narrow down the dynamic range and make your volume more consistent throughout your clip. From the Effect drop-down menu, select Limiter to apply it to your clip. For voiceovers, set the type to Hard Limit, and if your volume levels are fairly normal, set the gain to about 3 to 4 decibels. The Limit To setting decides how loud your loudest parts will go. Set this to negative 3 decibels if this is the only audio track in your video, or minus 4.5 decibels if this will be part of a mix. Next, set your hold to 2 milliseconds and choose No to apply makeup gain. Hit the OK button to apply the limiter filter. Step 4. Equalizer This step is very objective and will be very different depending on your voice. To apply the equalizer effect, select Equalizer from the drop down menu. What I like to do for my voiceovers is first apply the bass boost preset, then open the equalizer again and apply the treble boost preset. This works for me, but like I said before, this will be very different for different voices. Step 5. Normalize The normalize effect applies a constant amount of gain to bring up peak volume to a target level. This effect should always be applied last, 
after the compressor effect and the limiter filter are used to narrow down the dynamic range. This will ensure the softer parts of your recording have enough gain applied to them to make them clearly audible. Select the Remove DC offset and Normalize Maximum Amplitude checkboxes and set the value to minus 1 decibels. Press OK to normalize your recording. Now let's take a listen to my demo clip before. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel for another tutorial video. And after. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel for another tutorial video. Not all these effects are necessary and everyone's take on what sounds better will be very different. This is what I find works for me. Let me know in the comments below what kind of effects you apply to your audio clips. And if there's any audio experts watching this and have some tips for me, I would love to hear from them. As always, if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and share with someone else who might enjoy it. And if you haven't yet, check out the rest of my channel for more tutorial videos. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you back next week.